Hello, sis D, and I'm back with another video. And today we have some brand new information on the PlayStation 5 Pro. Now, in my last video, I went over the specifications that were leaked from the PlayStation 5 Pro via Moore's Law is Dead's leak. Now, this appears to be a real document. Now, in the last video, I said that I do believe this to be real. And since then, Tom Henderson has come out and actually confirmed the leak that the documents were, in fact, authentic. So that gives us a lot more to work with. Now, since then, we've gotten even more information on the PlayStation 5 Pro. And I gotta say these details, they do change some of my opinions on the PlayStation 5 Pro. Now let's start off with the article. Now, Tom Henderson, I have him up on the screen here. You can follow him on Twitter at Tom Henderson, and he is a reliable leaker. Now he's got pretty much everything that he's predicted, right? I think he had like one thing wrong, and it was just because the company changed their plans. But for everything else, he has been spot on, and his track record speaks for himself. Now, since then, other outlets have come out and reported about it. CNBC has reported about it. Everybody is reporting on it. Sony has not come out and even said a word on whether it is true or not, or if they're just not gonna comment. They haven't said anything at all. And I've said it many times before, where there is smoke, there is fire. And I think at this point, anyone that's denying the PlayStation 5 Pro's existence, they're really just in denial and they're in the first stage of grief, which is denial. And I think soon they're gonna enter into the cope phase. I'm already seeing a lot of posts out there saying that the PlayStation 5 Pro is not gonna be a big improvement over the PlayStation 5. Now, let's take the CPU out of the equation. The GPU is a substantial uplift over the PlayStation 5. That is undeniable. The PlayStation 5 has 10 teraflops of performance. The PlayStation 5 Pro has 33.5 teraflops of performance. And then we get into these arguments. I've seen it online, a lot of people posting, saying, well, specs don't tell you the whole stories, and this is on paper. Well, on paper, the PlayStation 5 is 10 teraflops. On paper, the PlayStation 5 Pro is 33.5 teraflops. I think it's safe to say that there's going to be a pretty big gulf in performance. Now, today we're gonna go over to uh, insidergaming.com like usual. I'll leave a link in the description down below so you guys can check it out for yourself. Now, they go on to say, following this week's leaks on the PlayStation 5 Pro GPU specs and performance targets, Insider Gaming has learned more PlayStation 5 Pro specs. For comparison's sake, we are also including the specifications of the standard PlayStation 5. Now, as you can see, the system memory, you're getting a substantial uptick. It's gonna be 28% increase over the standard PlayStation 5. So this will help where some PlayStation 5 have bottlenecks, they're not gonna have that same bottleneck on the PlayStation 5 Pro. So some games that are struggling at 1800p are gonna be able to run at a native 4K resolution, in theory at least, on the PlayStation 5 Pro. Now the CPU is said to be identical to the standard PlayStation 5. However, the Pro they say has a high CPU frequency mode, which takes the CPU to 3.85 gigahertz, a 10% increase over the standard console. Now I gotta say this news is disappointing. That means that the CPU is still gonna be a bottleneck in certain games. Games that were locked at like 30 FPS, they're not gonna have a huge uptick performance based on the CPU alone. Now I think there's other things inside the console that will increase the performance and we'll get into that a little bit later, but I gotta be honest with you guys, this is very disappointing that it's only a 10% increase over the standard PlayStation 5 console. Now I'm hoping when they announce this and they have their uh, press conference and Cerny presents the PlayStation 5 Pro, that there's something that they've done to the CPU, some type of modifications, uh, some type of customizations that allow the CPU to do more than 10%. But as it stands right now, it's just a 10% increase. And then they go over the specs that were leaked last week. So rendering 45% faster than the PlayStation 5, two to three times ray tracing performance, 33.5 uh, teraflops performance, PSSR, PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution Upscaling, uh, support for resolution up to 8K is planned in the future. Now, don't hold your breath on an 8K. Let's just try to master 4K 60 or anywhere near 4K 60 before we even talk about 8K. So 
don't get all hyped up on the PlayStation 5 Pro saying it's going to do 8K. There's barely any 8K TVs out there, okay? So I don't understand why these companies still push this 8K narrative. It's ridiculous. Anyways, they go on to say custom machine learning architecture, AI accelerator supporting 300 tops of 8-bit computation, 67 T-flops of 16-bit floating point operation. Now they get into the ray tracing performance. So they say an additional 30 WGPs running specialized BVH traversal shaders versus 18 WGPs running BVH4 transversal shaders of the standard PlayStation 5. So right there alone, you're going to get a huge uptick in performance in ray tracing. And this is what led me to believe in my first video why I said this is going to be RDNA 4 because there is no RDNA 3 GPU that is capable of the ray tracing performance that the PlayStation 5 Pro is capable of doing. Now recently AMD announced that this is a big year for deployment of their new AI and they said it's going to be pertaining to gaming. Now we have the PlayStation 5 Pro coming out this year. Could it be related? Are Sony and AMD working together? Are they going to announce what is cooking in the PlayStation 5 with its AI upscaling? Because we don't really know much about it. We just know that it's going to give a better image quality than what we're getting from FSR. We know that it's using machine learning uh reports are coming out that there's no mpu on it so there's not going to be uh the type of ai that you get with dlss on the neural network it's going to be something that is trained but how is it trained does the uh, ai accelerator that supports 300 tops of 8-bit computation does it really assist in the ai upscaling in the playstation 5 there's a lot of questions that we need answered here but a few things like i said stand out to me that this is not your regular RDNA 3 GPU. Now I say that to say this, Kepler. Kepler is a well-known leaker. He's leaked us numerous consoles, numerous chips. It's always been accurate. He told us that the PlayStation 5 Pro would have 60 out of 64 CUs. Now, some people are saying, oh, the PlayStation 5 Pro, it's a 7700 XT. And I argued it can't be a 7700 XT because it has 60 out of 64 CUs. If anything, it would be closer to a 7800. Now, it's clocked at 2.18 gigahertz. And you do the math, that's how it gets to the 35 teraflops of performance that the 7700 XT has. Now, this being an RDNA 4, the teraflops are not measured the same as RDNA 3. We got to say that right off the bat. So 33.5 teraflops of RDNA 4 should be superior to the same T-flop count on RDNA 3, much less RDNA 2. Once again, we're doing a jump from like 10 teraflops to 33.5 teraflops. I don't care if you say it's on paper. It's a big jump. It's going to be substantial. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm a little bit disappointed about the CPU, and we'll probably save that for another video, uh, especially when we get more details pertaining to uh, PSSR, their upscaling uh, technology that they're using with machine learning. When we have more details about that and we see like a demo of it, then I can have a more informed opinion. Anyways, Kepler says that BVH8 is interesting. Not only confirms that the PlayStation 5 Pro is using RDNA 4's ray tracing engine, but also confirms that RDNA 4 doubles ray trace throughput per cycle, something which hasn't been mentioned in any open source patch yet. So, that's insane. So you have Kepler saying that this performance is RDNA 4. So if they have RDNA 4 ray tracing on their GPU, it's safe to say that the GPU is based off the RDNA 4 architecture. Now, this is coming out November this year. And some people are saying that this is not going to yield better performance than the PlayStation 5. It will. It will have better ray tracing performance. It'll have a higher resolution. It'll have higher frame rates. Now, the frame rates are going to depend on how well their AI upscaling is, how well PSSR performs. It's really going to be dependent on that. But if it's anything like they're describing it to be, I think a lot of games are going to be able to achieve 60 FPS. Now, will GTA 6 run at 60 FPS with PSSR? In all honesty, I can say possibly, but I cannot commit to that 
until we actually see this in motion, till we actually see and know more about PSSR and how it will affect games on the PlayStation 5 Pro. Anyways, I wanna know what you guys think about all this. Personally, I'm very excited for the PlayStation 5 Pro. I think it's gonna be a fantastic machine. I'm gonna stand by my initial claims that I think it's a mistake that Microsoft does not have an answer to the PlayStation 5 Pro. I believe when the PlayStation 5 Pro comes out, a lot of gamers are gonna change their tune on whether they want a faster, better, stronger Xbox Series X. And I hope that Microsoft is just keeping their cards close to their vest and they surprise gamers this holiday season. Because when the PlayStation 5 Pro comes out and if Microsoft doesn't have an answer to that, I honestly believe that's not going to be good for the Xbox brand. Anyways, I wanna know what you guys think about all of this. Let me know in the comment section down below. And like I usually say, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one.